Okay, guys, we're back. We're back. Now, we're going to do some painting demonstration here today. Um, there's different ways of doing it. I have preferred ways. I use many methods when I'm painting because I went different looks and that. Uh, what I've got here is a piece of wood that is rough sawn. And uh, I like spray paint because if you look at it, it pretty much covered the whole thing. Uh, and it's evenly. It gets down in the cracks and everything else. Now, to kind of give you an idea of what it's like um, when you hand paint, I'm going to try to set this up here. There we go. There we go. Now I can demonstrate this. This is actually oil paint. It's an old can I had. And this is a two inch brush. It's small. I really don't need anything big. I don't want to waste the money. So I get a small brush because a lot of times it's harder to buy the thinner and clean it nowadays. The stores just aren't carrying it. So we're having to make do. paint the red well when you're doing the red okay the white's not dry but that's okay we're just demonstrating as you can see now in order to get in the crack you're going to have to sit here and you're going to have to do every single one like this and you're going to have to work at it to get it down in there which is unacceptable and i mean you've got kind of a glossy look i mean it's supposed to be a wood carving. Uh, it's not a piece of plastic. Um, so that's basically what would happen if you were using paint. Um, I didn't stir the paint up so it's not bright red, but this shows you what it does on a piece of wood. Now if you want to do a white and do a brush over, it kind of makes it look antique and that's kind of cool. And I do stuff like that all the time, especially on wood carvings. And I, I want to get a really <laughs> nice finish, something, a kind of patina look, you know. Especially if I'm making something look like bronze or something, I'll do that. Uh, what I do is I use a uh, red primer on it, spray paint. And I get sea foam green. And I dry brush it on it. So it's just got this wisp kind of look to it. So it's not solid. You don't want solid. And after you've done that, then you get some uh, gold, pure gold. You can get it in an apple barrel or uh, plaid or any of those uh, companies with the paint. You can get it with them. And uh, a lot of times I'll take my finger and I just go add my highlights. But you can take a little brush and add it if you'd like. Uh, you just add a little and that way it makes it look like it's bronze and it's just a little oxidized okay now i've got this uh, mushroom that we carved the other day and it's for a customer so now we're going to finish it up and we're going to use spray paint because i want it to really get in there good now the bottom part of my my mushroom i want white and, and I go in here and I start. What I do is I'll go one angle, look at another angle. And as I go around, you got to get underneath because, you know, you want a good coat on it. And then when you get down here, you don't go all the way down in the corner. You just shoot the corner of the paint. And you get a little bit of overspray, but that's okay. The time that wears off. We're going to put this heavier on here. And uh, we'll probably go with like two coats. I think I want it a little bit bright, you know. It's for a girl that's building a... Um, uh, her family's helping her build a uh, hobbit house. And uh, it's on the property where their home is. But that's going to be her little home. And give her a place to go out and have her own little... Which is kind of neat, you know. Kids should feel able to do things like that. 
I know my parents, it was funny, I uh, didn't want to be in the rooms with my brothers. And uh, so we had a three room tent <laughs> and I asked my parents if I could live in the tent. And I had a little sitting room in the middle, the other room was my closet and the other room was my bed and that. And uh, so, and then I would go inside the house. Oh, and then I would go inside the house to use the bathroom and the shower and stuff. Uh, but but I, I loved it. It was a great thing for me, you know, until I got tired of it. <laughs> uh, I spent quite a bit of time there. My friends would come over and they thought it was the neatest, neatest thing in the world. My parents would let me live in a tent. And uh, 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 living on very small things in life, which I, for some reason, can't say that word. Um, has been a, a goal in my life. I, I've had a lot. And sometimes a lot is not good. Sometimes it's nice just to be simple. Um, my wife and I have done very, very well. and uh, We've enjoyed our homes and stuff. But then we decided that we would live the tiny housewife. Uh, for a little while. We still have our home home and stuff. Uh, so we always have a home to go to if that's we choose to just stop what we're doing. But uh, so far, uh, we enjoy it. And uh, well, my wife and I have got to do a lot of things we would never have got to do in any other circumstance. Okay, now... Hmm. The paint's making my nose itch again. Okay. The secret to painting with spray paint is number one, you always go from light colors to dark. You never put your dark colors. Now, see, when I oil paint, uh, a lot of times, I'll, I'll do all my darks. And then I start building up on top of that and adding my lights. But with wood carvings if I put black on there and decide I want white it'll never work it'll look horrible and a lot of times when I make the mistake I'll carve it off and then I'll put my light color on and then I'm okay now when I do my red I'm gonna get a little bit of tinge of overspray on this but that's okay because that way it kind of blends in together and it, it just not white and it pops out at you and knocks you down. So that's her white. That's pretty much all we're gonna do. Um, also on this, when you get done, uh, here, let's turn this up a little. Okay, that, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, um, once you get this on, this is your color. Uh, some some paints are better than others. Uh, I have certain brands I like. So now you, what you do is you add your colors, and then you got to get um, a good sealer. Um, I have two or three sealers I like. Um, I have one that works really, really, really good, and. Uh, in the weather, I've had a really good success with it. It doesn't change your carving much, uh, but boy, it sure holds it on there. So once I get this and it dries, then I will put my sealer on it. Okay, now let's, um, oh, I have to go get my paintbrush and my paint, so I'll be right back. I'm painting the red on the top here. Um, that gives it the look of the type of mushroom the customer wants. They like it with the red with the white spots on it, which is kind of a really cool contrast. So see how that red just gets in those uh, wood grain and everything there? That, that's just really cool the way it does that. And able to spray in there where the wood boards and put the holes. Uh, you know, the trees have wood boards and they drill these little holes all in here. 
and some people go, no, termites, and it's like, nah, that's a little big for a termite. So, okay, what I do is I use this uh, craft paint, and uh, you gotta wet your paintbrush. We're gonna do the dots a little big on this, even though they would probably be small. I think oh, this is more of a non-realistic mushroom. <laughs> a cartoon mushroom. We could actually put a face on it. Nah, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do this. And uh, do something I think the girl would like. So, let's see. First thought. There we go. What I do is I... Uh, I put a lot of paint on there and I push the brush to the outside edge like you're cutting in a wall. And it, it's rough on, so I'm having to dab at this thing to get it down in that wood grain. Um, we want it round, so. It's gonna take a lot of paint on this one. Take it a while for it to dry. That's a good dot. You like that? Okay. It's, uh, Start adding dots. They don't have to be perfectly round, but you want them to look good, you know. Try to keep them relatively round. We can go a little bit smaller if you want on some of them. There's a little trick with a paintbrush if it's smooth, but maybe I'll try it on this next one to kind of show you. What you do is you put the corner of the brush down, and then you spin. And normally, you can put the coolest round dot you ever seen. But it's rough song. This is a chainsaw carving. Okay, with a little tiny dot there. There you go. What do you think? Looking pretty good, huh? I mean, it's something anybody could do. Because it don't have to be perfect. And like I said, I, I am a rustic artist, so... Unless I want it really smooth, we're not going to do that. And I'm not really into doing it smooth. Nature's kind of rustic too, you know, and that's what I like. That's what I like. Oh, man, it's hot out here, guys. Welcome to Florida. They call this paradise. You sweat. Okay, we're getting there. Man. Gotta get some down here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's let's turn this thing so you can kind of see what I'm doing over here. I'm gonna show you some more dots. There we go. Now this is kind of like a pink polka dotted bikini she wore, you know? Uh, it's a red, a white polka dotted red cap mushroom. You know what's so sad is I really don't know the name of this mushroom. I see it all the time. And I probably read it. But it's just not in my category of what's important in life. And I found out if I don't clutter my brain with all them Latin words and whatever words they are. I just enjoy a lot, a lot, a lot more. I don't have things in that in my head just worrying me. And I can sit out here and I can paint dots. It's a whole lot easier than sitting at a desk, I think. I've been doing it for a while. Had a chance to meet a lot of good friends. Okay, let's get some dots up here. Hey, we're moving right along now. I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting the hang of this one. And I've done dots before. I guess I, sometimes you just got to keep learning over again. Okay, let's get something down underneath here so it looks like, wow, what happened? We'll put a little one. We'll put a little one. Uh, we got over half done. We're almost there. Let's 
get them up here. We're gonna keep them a little high, so this is the bottom rim of the. Uh, you can help the carving sometimes by putting shadows and uh, the way you paint it kind of gives it that 3D look too, you know. Oh, and you know the funny thing is about these holes in this thing? Bugs just love mushrooms. And they'll put holes in mushrooms like crazy. And they'll look just like this out in the wild. So, you know, it's, a, it's true to life, you know? Got that bug there. He's just, just eating away on this mushroom. He likes it. You know, it's funny. A lot of people don't realize it. Is that a leaf? That's weird. A lot of people don't realize it, but the bugs that get in, the wood borers, uh, they're, they're not actually after the wood. When they first enter a tree, you have a thin layer of bark, which is called a cambium layer. And when they get in there, they're eating this cambium layer, which feeds them. Of course, it kind of hurts the tree a little bit. That's what causes them to die. And um, then once they get done, they bore a hole into the log, not to eat the wood. That's, they're not eating that wood. They're just going in there to lay eggs, and they want them eggs to hatch out and make their little babies. So all them holes aren't them. They're not going up there in there to eat that wood. I tell people, I say, if you see a bug coming out, he's not in there eating. He's just getting out to go find a, another tree to kill. <laughs> That's just a cycle of life. That's okay. Another tree will grow back. Uh, boy, this brush is holding a lot of paint today. You always clean your brushes as soon as you get done. And, um... I use my Dr. Pepper bottles. They work really good for me. But you got to clean them out because it will sour. But see, I can throw it around. Doesn't hurt it. Now we have a mushroom. And then I'll come back later on. I'll actually sign it or something right down here. You always want to sign your stuff. Uh, people like it better when they say the artist actually took enough uh, pride in his work to put his name on it. Okay, I hope this helped. Uh, here I am at uh, Ami and Jerry's place. And I'll catch you later. Take care.